we are back to shooting the monster. And in this video, we will start programming the monster's life in multiple levels. So here goes. So remember from the last video, when the bullet hits the monster, it broadcasts this monster hit message, which the monster receives and it changes its costume. But of course, other sprites can receive that monster hit message as well. And in particular, I'm very interested in this monster life sprite and I'm going to program it first. So at the start of the game, when I hit the flag, I will want to bring this win flag click block and I'm going to switch the costume to full, so fully complete life, and I'm also going to hide it. I'm going to hide the sprite. I'm also going to switch the costume to full and show the sprite when I receive the level one message. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to bring when I receive level one and from looks, I'm going to switch the costume to full and show. This might not be 100% necessary, but I just want to make sure that the life of the monster is full when I show the sprite. Now, the more interesting script is what happens when we hit the monster. So remember, the bullet clone broadcasts monster hit. So the monster life is there to receive it. So let's go to events and bring in when I receive and let's select monster hit. Now the very easy thing to do would be to go to looks and to say next costume. But if I hit the flag and if I hit the monster a number of times, notice that the costume does indeed get changed, but the life resets back to full. So I don't want that. I want the monster life to only cycle until it gets to the last costume, which is the 10th costume. And when the monster is about to die, I'm going to broadcast a message saying the monster is about to die. And if the level is less than five, I will respawn the monster and trigger the new level. So here goes. I'm going to bring in an if else block from the control section. And if the costume number is less than 10, then I'm free to go to the next costume. Otherwise, I'm going to broadcast a new message. So in the diamond shaped space for the if block, I'm going to bring in the less than operator. And in the first space, I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to bring this rounded costume number block. So if the costume number is less than 10, which is the total amount of costumes that the monster life has, then I'm free to cycle to the next costume. In the else block, I'm going to trigger the respawn of the monster, which involves telling a number of sprites to do a few things. So I'm going to do that by broadcasting a message. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to broadcast a new message saying monster respawn. So let me hit the flag and validate this logic. The monster life is full, but is not visible on the screen, which is exactly how I programmed it. And if I hit the play button, it starts at full. And if I hit the monster a number of times, and if I make it die, I'm broadcasting a message. So notice that the costume doesn't cycle anymore and the message is being broadcast. But we need to make other sprites aware of this message and react to that. And I'm actually going to start with the monster life itself. So when I do a monster respawn, I would like the monster life to replenish back to 100%. So I'm going to add a when I receive block. So when I receive monster respawn, I'm going to get the costumes of monster life back to the full state, but in increments, just to create this effect that the monster is getting its life back. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to switch the costume to hit nine, which is the lowest life. And then I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring in the wait block and I'm going to wait a small amount, like 0.3 seconds. Now I need to repeat this 10 times for all of the costumes. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate right clicking on the purple block. And now I have two switches. Then I'm going to right click on the first switch and I'm going to duplicate. So I'm duplicating two switches at once. Then I'm going to right click and duplicate again. And I'm duplicating four switches now. And I have a total of eight. And then I need a total of two more until I have 10. 
And uh, let's switch to the right costume. So 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and full. All right. So if I click this script, notice that the monster life replenishes back to full. After all of the cycling, I'm going to broadcast another message to tell all the other sprites that the monster is back in shape. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to broadcast a new message. And I'm going to name this message monster respawn complete. Now let's make other sprites react to this monster respawn and monster respawn complete messages. I'm going to click on the messages sprite and I'm going to make the messages sprite go to the next costume when the monster starts respawning. So when the monster starts respawning, that is when I receive the monster respawn message. I will change to the next costume. So I'm, if I'm at level one, I'll go to level two. If I'm at level three, I'll go to level four and so on and so forth. All right, so I'm going to go to the looks and I'm going to bring in next costume. And I'm also going to highlight the fact that I've changed the level. So I'm going to simply make the sprite a little bit bigger and then a little bit smaller. So I'm going to bring in two repeat blocks. So repeat 10 and repeat 10 with a wait one second in between them. And in the first loop, I'm going to make the sprite a little bit bigger so from looks I'm going to change size by 10 and then in the other repeat loop I'm going to change size by negative 10. So if I detach this notice what's happening if I click notice that the sprite changed to level 2 and it grew bigger and then grew smaller just to highlight the fact that we are progressing to the next level. Now, this message sprite will also need to react to the monster respawn complete message. So, let me organize these scripts a little bit better. So, when I receive monster respawn complete, then I need to broadcast the new level message. Now, the trouble is that I'm not keeping track of which level I am at. So we need to create a variable for keeping track of the level. So I'm going to go to variables and I'm going to make a variable called level. All right. And when the flag is clicked, I'm going to initialize this level variable to one. So I'm going to set level to one. And then at the point where I receive the monster respond complete, I will increase the level by one. So I'm going to change level by one and then finally I'm going to broadcast the appropriate message level one level two level three level four and level five so I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring in an if block so if level is equal to two I'm going to broadcast level two if level is equal to three I'm going to broadcast level three and so on and so forth so if level is equal to two I'm going to broadcast level 2, which is a new message. I'm not checking whether level is equal to 1 because I start with level equal to 1. And the first time I receive monster respawn complete, I'm already changing level by 1, which means I'm bringing level to at least 2. So I'm going to check if level is equal to 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I'm going to duplicate this if block and duplicate the other two if blocks. So if level is equal to two, I'm going to broadcast level two. If level is equal to three, I'm going to broadcast a new message called level three. If level is equal to four, I'm going to broadcast another message called level four. And if level is equal to five, I'm going to broadcast another message called level five. But for those of you who hate copy and paste, I'm going to show you a smarter way to do it. So I'm going to take these blocks aside and I'm going to bring in a single broadcast block and in it I will calculate what message I need to broadcast and I will broadcast I'm going to go to operators and I'm going to join 
level and a space very importantly so level space and in the other space I'm going to put in level so no matter what level is I'm going to broadcast the right message if level is equal to 2 I'm going to broadcast level space 2 if level is equal to 5 I'm going to broadcast level space 5 which is the right message I'm going to keep this detached if chain if you need it now because we're broadcasting the different level messages we need to bring up the monster defenses so the level one defense is hidden from the screen i would like to fade into the screen when it receives the level one message so i'm going to go to events and i'm going to bring in when i receive level one and the first thing that i'm going to do is to show the sprite but I'm also going to set its transparency effect, that is its ghost effect to 100. So I'm fading into the screen. I'm setting its ghost effect to 100 and over 20 repetitions, I'm going to decrease its transparency effect. So I'm going to go to control, bring in the repeat block, repeat 20 and go back to looks and change the ghost effect by negative five. Now there's another thing that I need to do when I receive level one, which is rotating the defense continuously so that I make the game a little more difficult. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to bring another starter block when I receive level one. So when this sprite receives the level one message, both of these scripts will execute simultaneously. And this other script will simply keep rotating the sprite. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring in a forever loop and I'm going to go to motion and turn clockwise by a simple one degrees. So if I hit the flag and if I hit play, notice that both of these scripts lit up simultaneously and one of them ended in the meantime and the other one is still continually running. The problem is that my bullets are bypassing the defense, which is wrong. So let us fix that. I'm going to go to the bullet sprite and I'm going to add a simple check in this forever loop in the when I start as a clone script, which checks whether the bullet is touching one of these defenses. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring in the if block and I'm going to put in a big condition inside. I'm going to bring in operators and I'm going to bring in this or operator. And I'm going to duplicate it three more times and I'm going to snap it into one another. So I have a big OR operator with five spaces inside. These are the conditions for touching the defenses. So touching level one, touching level two, three, four and five. All right. So I'm going to go to sensing and I'm going to bring in this touching block. So touching level one and I'm going to duplicate it touching level two, duplicate, touching level three, and two more, touching level four, and one more time, touching level five. This is a big condition. So I'm going to snap it right in the diamond shaped space for the if condition. So if I'm touching either one of these defenses, I'm going to switch the costume to that explosion effect and I'm going to delete the clone. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to say switch costume to explode. And after a brief moment of time, I'm going to delete this clone. So I'm going to go to control. I'm going to wait a very small amount like 0.1 seconds, like a tenth of a second, and then I'm going to delete this clone. In the previous game run, I've killed the monster two times in one go, so the messages sprite is too big now. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to click on the messages sprite and I'm going to click on this set size to 100%, so to bring it back to its normal size, right? And now I'm going to click on the flag. So, I'm hitting the play button and notice what's happening. If I hit the bullets now, they don't hit the monster anymore. They hit the wall. And the best part of it is 
because we wrote this very generic broadcast join level, it's very easy to add all these other levels now. So if I click on level one and I copy this code, so drag this code all the way to level two and go to level two and change this one I received from level one to level two, this magically will appear on screen when the level two message is going to get broadcast. So if I hit the flag and if I kill the monster for level one, one more. So notice that level two is there. And after the monster life gets back to full, this sprite appeared on screen. Now we also need to rotate it, which is very easy. When I receive the level two, I'm going to rotate two degrees. So make this a little harder. So what I did was to drag this when I receive level one script to the level two sprite, which duplicated this code. And then I changed the message to level two. So if I hit the flag now and the play sprite appears, let me kill the monster for level one. So after the monster life replenishes, we have the fully functional level two sprite. Now, the reason why level one and level two and all the other level defenses rotate around the monster apparently flawlessly is because of the same reason why the player sprite rotates around the center of the screen as well. So the costumes are circular and symmetrical around the center of the sprite, which is right over here. So now we can very easily program the other sprites as well. Let me stop the game and let me bring in this code to level three and this code to level three as well. And let me unwrap them. So the level three sprite will react to the level three message and it will turn three degrees instead of two. So rotate a little bit faster. And then let me do this again for the level four defense. So when I receive level three, but the other script did not get copied. So I'm going to go to level three again. All right. So when I receive level four in both of the scripts and the rotation here is going to be four degrees instead of three. So a little bit faster than that. And let me copy this again for the level five sprite. All right, so when I receive level five in both the scripts and the level five sprite was gonna turn five degrees. Good, now there's one more thing that I need to do. This level one defense is a little bit special in that when the monster starts respawning, I will need to make the monster invincible. That is, I will need to switch the costume to this full defense ring. So let me go to the code and let me bring the events section. And when I receive monster respawn, so when the monster starts filling its life back, I will also need to protect it from my bullets. So I will change the costume to invincible. And then I'm going to copy the script that will say when I receive monster respawn complete. So when the monster has finished replenishing its life, it will need to be vulnerable again. So I'm going to switch the costume back to ring one. So if I hit the flag now and let me trigger the gameplay, let me kill the monster real quick. So notice that when the monster starts replenishing its life, the defense kicks in and I won't be able to harm it anymore as it's replenishing its life. And after it's done, then it will become vulnerable again. All right. And at the pass of the new level, it replenishes its life and a new defense kicks in and so on and so forth. Level four and the new defense. Right. This becomes really cool. All right, so we've done a lot of work and we've learned a lot of things along the way. Join me in the next video as the game is not all roses and butterflies. The monster can still fire bullets and bombs at us. So join me in the next video where we will program that.